In this video I would like to introduce to you the way that you can use Google Calendar to create time slots that other people can sign up for. Now just a disclaimer, in order to really utilize this to its fullest, people will need Google accounts. So if you're using this within your own organization and you are a Google organization, you're completely set. If you're using this in a school and you're just sending these out to your students or your staff or your faculty, you're completely set. As soon as you start stepping outside of your organization, then you do run the risk of some people not being able to reserve some of those time slots unless they are Google users. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't communicate with you some other way and reserve that time slot, but Typically, if you want to use this in the best case scenario, all of the users are going to need to be Google users. Now, in order to create the time slots, what you need to do is you need to create a new event. So I'm here on a day, and let's say I'm going to have some office hours from 1 to 3 p.m. And so what I can do here is I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to say office hours, and then I will create that time range from 1 to 3 p.m. And then you'll notice here that one of the options I have is appointment slots. So I'm going to click that. And now what I can do is I can determine how long each slot duration is going to be. So I'm going to create slots of 15 minute chunks. All right, so for two hours I'll have 15 minute chunks of time. So we'll go ahead and we'll click save here. And then what you'll see here is the appointment block. Okay, now if I click on the event, I got it. One of the things you can do here is go to the appointment page for this calendar. Now this is gonna be something that you are going to want to distribute to those that are going to be signing up for those appointment slots. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Okay, when I load that link, what I'm looking at right now is the current week. So there's no appointment slots that I have here. And I do notice a link here that says the next available appointment slots are on March 23rd. So let's go take a look at that. I can either click this link here or I can go to the next week there. And now I see here in that time range, what I have are some office hour time slots that people can sign up for. Okay, if I wanna take a look at a day view, we can go ahead, let's go back to that day. And there we see those office hour slots, okay? Now this again is the link that you want to send to other individuals, all right? So let's, I'm actually going to go back to my appointment. Let me copy this link. So I'm gonna right click and choose copy link. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this to my students and they're gonna be able to sign up for one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the perspective of a student and see how they might sign up for an appointment slot. Okay, now I have a student account loaded up and what they are seeing is pretty much the same thing I saw before as well. Uh, this is going to be the appointment slots for the particular uh, person that has uh, distributed this link and I distributed this link via email you could distribute it via Google Classroom or some other form it really doesn't matter how you distribute that whatever way you normally distribute links you can go ahead and use that method so I'm gonna go ahead and click this link next available appointment slot is on March 23rd alright so let's go take a look at that and we can see that we are brought right there and now as an individual I can choose to sign up for one of those slots. So let's say I'm going to take that two o'clock slot. So I'm going to click that and then what that allows me to do is to book an appointment. So here is the what, that's the office hours. Now that's the title coming from the event that I created. So I created the event called office hours. So that's what's being brought in there. And then you'll see what's being appended is the name of the person that it's attempting to claim that appointment. Now people could change that so you just got to keep that in mind and that will be reflected on the other end in your own calendar we could put a where and the description so you may ask the people that are booking an appointment to also leave a description as to what it is that they would like to discuss that's really up to you um, and then they can go ahead and click save now what that's going to do is it's going to book that appointment for them and it's going to store it in their google calendar 
All right, so they can go and view it in their own calendar or they can just stay here. I'll just stay here for now. But I did want you to note that you will see here that one of those time slots is now gone. All right, one of those time slots is now gone because one of them was claimed. We had eight before, now we only have seven. All right, now let's go take a look at our view and see what it looks like on our end. All right, so I'm back on my page. I'm going to close this here. And now we can see here that in my event view or my daily view, I have one of these slots now reserved. Okay, one of these slots now reserved. So that's gonna show me who is going to reserve that slot. And now we can see a little bit more about the details of that particular event. We could see uh, the exact time and we can see now that we have two guests. Now what we can do here is we can also go and edit the event. So one of the things I like about this is it now allows me to go through here and alter some of these uh, event details. And when I go to save them, it's going to alert the other person via email of those changes. So one thing I might like to do is to add some conferencing to this. So I could go ahead here, click Hangout Meet, and now I have a Hangout Meet code that I can use. And if I click Save, it's going to prompt me to send those changes to all of my guests. So if I felt someone should join me in this particular person, I can go ahead and add some guests here. Otherwise, I can go ahead and click Save. And it says, would you like to send update emails to existing Google Calendar guests? And you can either dismiss that, don't send it, or send. So if I, again, if I want an email sent to those people uh, about those changes, I can go ahead and click Send. Nope, let's dismiss. All right, so now you have an event set for a particular person. You still have the other seven time slots available and other people can choose those. Now, what happens if you need to cancel one? Well, either person that is attached to this event can certainly delete it or cancel it. Let's go take a look at it from the other perspective. All right, so now we're in the student's Google Calendar. We can see right here that they have the event on their calendar. Now what if they want to cancel this event? Well they can go ahead and click here and now what they can do is come up here to delete event so they can remove this from the calendar. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it's going to give us a prompt would you like to send cancellation emails to Google Calendar guests? Now they can say yes or no okay they can say send or don't send. Uh, let's go ahead and just let's pretend they say don't send. So we'll go ahead and click that now what it's done is it removed that event from their calendar. So let's go over to our calendar and see what that looks like on our end. Okay, we're back here at our calendar. And what you notice here is that this event looks a little different now. So when I click on that event, I can see here that this person has left it. So the question is, well, what does that mean for everybody else? Does that free up that time slot? Well, let's go take a look at that link that we had before that had all of those appointment slots. So now that we're back to the appointment page, we can see here that all eight appointments are now available for anybody to reserve. So by one person deleting that appointment slot, it does open up those other slots for other people. If I head back to my screen again, so one of the things I can do is now that that's been canceled, I can go ahead and right click and I can press delete. Or I can go into the event again and press delete. Either way, we can go ahead and just get that off of our calendar. That's not gonna do anything to those appointment slots because as we saw before, they were available. Now if you remember before, I said that this is really only going to work for people with Google accounts. So you might ask, well, what if somebody communicated with me that they would like to reserve a slot, but they were unable to do that because they don't have a Google account? Well, the, the great thing is you can actually reserve one for them as well. So if I go to my event here and I go to the appointment page for the calendar, when I get to the calendar page, I can go to the next available appointment slots. And what I can do is I can actually reserve one of those on behalf of someone else. So let's just say they wanted the last slot here. So this is 2.45 to 3 p.m. So I can go ahead and click that. And then I can just say, hey, it's not with me. It's with Mr. Brown. So Mr. Brown wanted to book an appointment with me. He just mentioned it uh, via email. It doesn't have a Gmail account. So I can go ahead and book this for him. And now what that's going to do is it's going to book it in my appointment list. And now other people are not going to be able to reserve that slot. 
And so that's just a way you can reserve appointments manually, uh, even if the user does have a Google account. Maybe they just didn't know how to go ahead and do that. Maybe you're talking to them on the phone. You can just go ahead and reserve that time slot. So what that does is it puts it on your calendar and also removes the availability of that slot from other people. All right, that gives you a little overview of how to create some appointment slots that other people can reserve. I hope you find some good use for it.